Hey guys, uh, welcome to another live stream with uh, with your host, my Malfunction here in Fungray. It's been okay day. It's seven o'clock here, and it's quite dark outside. And um, mm. we've been having rain all week, but now to uh, brighten up our day and our week, we have Megan Dickinson from MD Gallery here in Fungray. Um, it's on a rough step, isn't it, Megan? Yes, it is. Just by the um, railway bridge, it just that goes over well right next to the to the gallery. Yep, and it's that's, and that's, uh, twice a day. Opposite the council building, opposite the uh, on the same street as the library, so you can't miss it. That's right, right on the corner with the beautiful big mural painted on the side. Awesome. So tell us about yourself a bit. Ah. Oh, um, so I studied uh, applied art at North Tech. I did a degree in visual applied art, Bachelor of Applied Art. And um, after that, I uh, was a curator at the Shutter Room Gallery, which is one of New Zealand's very few purely photography galleries. Wow. And then almost three years ago, actually, I opened up the MD Gallery. So that, that's in a nutshell. Obviously, I've done a bit more than that with my life, yeah. but um, <laughs> that's sort of my art um, journey, I guess. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the Shutter Room Gallery. So the Shutter Room is uh, run by volunteers and it is purely photography. Um, it's been going for probably around six years, I think. And there's a studio there as well that you can hire out if you want to do photo shoots. Um, anyone can apply to have an a exhibition there. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, a wide range of photography, traditional through to digital, um, you know, video installation work. It's fully kitted out to deal with all of that. Yeah, it's a really good good little gallery, and that's right opposite the um, entrance to the library. Do you, um, from my understanding, there isn't many uh, galleries which has a studio uh, part of it where you can actually go in and do shoots. And um, is that normal, or is it special for this special? Yeah, um, I'm of? sure. I'm sure there's a few around New Zealand, um, but this is the only one in Whangarei that you can do that. Yeah, and it's very reasonable prices and. It has a good link with North Tech. So there's a lot of students um, from North Tech who use it and, you know, do work experience there. And it's kind of, it's a good little stepping stone after you've studied um, to then have a show there if you're in. So the where is the sh shutter room? The shutter room is right opposite the door to the public library. So it's in a council building, um, the Sistema. Um, art, no, sorry, Sistema oh, so Music the, Group. So this um, is the old library, is it? Yeah, it's in the old library, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So tell me um, what made you decide to um, open up your own gallery? Um, well, it's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. So, um, and I guess just from working at the Shutter Room and getting more involved with it, um, I you know, I, it sort of confirmed that I really liked that kind of work. And uh, I've always had a passion for curating. So, um, yeah, it was it was a good stepping stone for me. And then it was really about finding the right building, you know, the right space mm -hmm. to have a gallery. And uh, this little space that I now occupy came up and I just thought, wow, okay, this, this is this little opportunity is right here in front of me. Am I going to do it? And then turning 50 also helped me, you know, kick, kick into it and go, right, well, if I'm not going to do it now, when am I going to do it? Exactly. So, yeah, that was a good push. And um, so, yeah, I've almost been going for three years. So it's it's been a, you know, when I opened, I had no idea if it was going to work, how long I'd be able to do it for. I just was totally driven by willpower and passion. Yeah. Passion for arts, passion for artists. You know, I want to show their work and I want to be part of making um, Whangarei an, an arts destination. Mm. So 
that's sort of what led me into doing it. And I just pretty much winged it from month to month and we'd go, oh, wow, great. I'm still going. Yep. And time has just ticked along and here I'm still going. So which it's great. I feel very blessed because I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. And um, it's definitely my happy place. One of them. Well, I mean, if you have a passion for something, I mean, that's going to drive you past any hard times you have because it's what you believe in and what you want to do. How yeah. is that um, passion, you know, um, reacted with people that, you know, in the community, uh, especially with artists? How's that help, you know, develop that, your passion towards? Well, I got, I, Obviously, the support I have is huge now. Um, it's been a process of proving myself, I guess, is also not just to me, but to the public, that I wasn't just going to, you know, open up a pop-up, which is what I got accused of doing quite a bit in the first sort of six months. Yeah. Um, yeah, I caught quite a bit of flack from people in the first year. And, um, you know, we'd come in and go, do you know what you're doing? You know, it's, you're never going to survive, blah de blah um, yeah. That's all it takes, I guess, for me to react and go, well, just watch me. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, and I think that's kind of normal, isn't it, for uh, when you get to a certain stage in your life, you, or if you, even if you have a passion for something, it's like, well, just watch me. Yeah. Um, I, I always say to people, just do it. If you really want to do something, just do it. And if, obviously, if it's you're not hurting anybody doing what you're choosing to do um, and just see what happens, because what's the worst case scenario is that it, it won't work. Um, but, you know, the journey that you've taken and the things you, that, that you learn along the way, or this, you know, although I don't want to sound trite when I say that, um, but it's true. And I, you know, have met so many wonderful people so after that first sort of eight months of getting a bit of flack, I just decided that I wasn't going to take that anymore. Yeah. And um, I sort of went, I said to the universe one day, okay, the next person who walks into my gallery and says something really negative to me, I'm going to let them have it. Yeah. And no, it, it stopped from then on. No one said anything. Yeah. So that was really good. I think that was just a good step for me to say, okay, that's enough. I'm sick of being totally nice to these naysayers, yeah. which is a little bit against my personality anyway, um, to take that kind of flack from people. So as soon as I did that, it all stopped. And mm. now I get people from Auckland, you know, driving up, purposely stopping to see yeah. what's happening. Um, I've got a lot of a lot of support from a lot of people now. And, you know, I guess that's just what I had to do. I had to prove what that I was committed to what I was doing, which is promoting Northland artists. So that's that's you know that's what's driving me. I yeah. think um, uh, people. I mean, a lot of people think that like you don't have to prove yourself ever, and you just you know, and they don't think that like it's just you just do it, and nobody's going to come up and give you a negative or give you a, you know you'll be blessed all the time with positivity. And it's good, you know, it's good to see that when you had that, you went stuck it out. And otherwise, we wouldn't have this amazing little gallery here supporting so many artists. I mean, you go from ceramics to paintings to prints. Uh, mm -hmm. What else is, have you been able to, um, you know, put into your gallery? I mean. Yeah, a big cross section. I mean, I'm trying to, part of that was learning, you know, what what is my market and what do people like? Um, also, it's about what I like as well. So I have to, I have to, I'm probably like the economist's worst nightmare because if I'm not passionate about the artist or their work, I, it's very difficult for me to talk, to be able to sell it. And so, you know, I'm not, I haven't done like, you know, courses in how to sell stuff because mm. I just totally believe in the, the product. So yeah. if I believe in it, I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to be able to put, you know, the best case forward for the artists. Mm. So I'm, I, I have a very high standard of art that I um, will show in the gallery. Yeah. And uh, I'm, you know, very, very strict on that because I want to show a very good high end uh, lot of work, yeah. which is consistent so that when people do pop in, whether they, you know, can only pop in once every three months or 
you know, once a month, that consistency of standard is still there. Mm -hmm. And that has, you know, that's been a really good thing. So I haven't, um, even when times are tough, I've stuck to that. And that's how I've developed a good reputation for stocking good art. Yeah. yeah. So what do you consider as a good high-end product? I mean, you, you, you deal with a lot of different artists and different yeah. art styles and mediums. Uh, I mean, like you've also had jewelry there as well. So uh, yeah. if I remember right. So, you know, like I said, you, you go from paintings to ceramics to jewelry uh, to prints. How do you establish what's a high-end product? Okay, so it's all about quality. It's it's about the quality of the product. Um, and like I said, I have I do have really high standards, and it's not just because I'm a perfectionist, because I admittedly am. Um, mm. It's because, you know, like I said, I'm trying to raise the standard of art in Northland mm. and, you know, ensure that my customers will always see that that high standard so the the show i have on at the moment is called adorn which is body adornment so jewelry i had that show last year and it was very um well received so i've decided to make that an annual event and i it's mainly you know northland artists but i do cast the net a little bit wider and pull in some other um, jewellers from around New Zealand whose work that I like. And again, like I said, if, if I like the work, then I'm going to be more inclined to be able to sell it. And yeah, I have to believe in that, that product. So let's talk about Adorn. So um, are there several artists involved or just a handful? Yeah, there's 25 artists. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that that exhibition was cut short due to lockdown. So sure. we're still showing it now. So I just reopened on Thursday. Excellent. And on Friday, I had four customers come in and you know make some quite big purchases. So th because they really want to support the local artists. So yeah. that's that's fantastic. And that you know that's what we're trying to foster that kind of attitude. Yeah all over New Zealand is to buy New Zealand made products and, you know, supporting artists. Obviously, you know, I get to take a commission from the sure. work that's sold, but the majority of it goes to the artist. So, you know, even through lockdown, I purchased work off an artist out of mm. my gallery yeah. um, to show support as well. So it's it's been really good, the support that I've received. And, and I think, um, you know, we, when we went to lockdown, I, you know, every, there was this whole uh, economy thing where people weren't able to work uh, and therefore the, um, their pockets were a bit short. But, like, I noticed that when uh, – I'm personally, I actually went out to spend money on Thursday. Just, yeah. Just to spend money because oh, I knew yeah. that our local uh, – like, our bus small businesses, doesn't matter who they are – they needed money to support their yeah. own employees as well. And yes. it's it's important that we do that. Okay, it might be hard for some people. It might be easy for some people. For, mm -hmm. for the middle ground people, you know, um, it's it, we it's 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 kind of strange when you think that, okay, I'm just going to put this money here and it's just going to go to this one place. But it actually doesn't. That $1 gets divided in so many other places because yeah. obviously you're going to give that um that um that artist that money that that artist is now going to buy food he's going to go pay rent is that then also going to spend on other products and maybe support other artists and i think exactly it's a it's a spin on effect isn't it you know spill on effect i think is the right terminology but um yeah you know it, it doesn't <sighs> And, and all the products in, in my gallery aren't all really expensive. You know, mm. the, well, I've got pieces in this show from $45 up to $5,000. So yeah. there's a huge range of prices. And that's another thing I always like to be able to cater for, you know, all different spenders because yeah. I want to include as many people in the art process that I can. Um, so yeah, there's there's small things that you can purchase, and that's that's what you know. That's what it comes down to. Like even that forty five dollars is still going to help someone, and still going to support the yeah. artist. And uh, and 
and a lot of people think that if you go to a gallery, it's going to be like, it's only because it's a high-end gallery, it's only going to be that huge priced item there. And mm -hmm. to have something at a smaller price is very welcoming, I think. And I think um, having that there uh, says a lot more about your, yourself as a gallery owner, as well as your support for the um, local community and the artists, because not everybody, like I said, is going to have that huge amount in their pocket, but yeah. they will be able to buy something to show. Um, so let's talk about um, the four weeks of lock, the first four weeks mm -hmm. of lockdown uh, of April. And how did you, um, I mean, I saw you posting videos and sharing videos. How did yeah. you actually connect with gallery, uh, like artists, I should say, with so your gallery? About, so the first two weeks of lockdown, I just kind of collapsed, I suppose, too, like a lot of people did and just, you know, took some time out to process what on earth was going on in the world. And um, I, my daughter and I went and stayed with my mother out in Matakohi. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was lovely. And then after about two weeks, uh, one morning I woke up and just went, oh, my gosh, I miss the, being in the gallery so much. And I miss talking to artists about their work. I miss talking to visitors or collectors coming in, you know, and talking about the artist's work. I just yeah. love the whole art chit chat. So because I had the time and I, you know, received some funding um, to get me through this period, little period, mm -hmm. I thought, well, one way I can give back to artists is to offer some online mentoring for free. Hmm. So I did that through Zoom, and so I was doing up to two artists a day, so an hour each time, and the response was really good. I wasn't too overwhelmed, so I, I checked with, in with the universe to, you know, not overwhelm me because I didn't want to go into, like, this crazy mode of, yeah. you know, having to do all that, and I had my daughter with me too, so I wanted a bit of work-life balance. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so I met, so I just advertised that through social media and um, Creative Northland also um, got, got in behind that. Mm -hmm. And I, so I did a, sort of two, two of those a day and met some of the artists I already knew um, and they just wanted a bit of direction with a particular body of work mm -hmm. that they were working on. And a lot of the artists were completely new to me. So that was mm -hmm. really great meeting a whole lot of new artists scattered around Northland. Um, so, yeah, they've all had one and some of them have had two free mentoring sessions. Yeah. So that was really rewarding for me because I got to keep in with the art chit-chat and, um, you know, that feel-good factor. I was helping some other people um, achieve their goals. And the other project that I did was I asked uh, a couple of, well, there was three who posted videos, um, uh, artists that I already represent, and I asked them to do little home videos and have whoever was, you know, videoing them. And I said to them, it doesn't matter if you say, um, 20 mm. times, just don't edit it. doesn't matter if it's shaky or blurry. Yeah. Just do it. So um, we had Grant Barron, who's a photographer, who does sort of alt process photography. Sally Spicer, who is a portrait artist, working mainly in watercolours and oils. And Janine Whale, who is a fibre artist. So mm -hmm. they all produce videos, and I posted those on social media. So that was another little project we did. So that was fun. Let's, let's talk about mentoring. Um, a lot of times, I mean, I've had uh, over the last possibly 30 years, I've had a lot of amazing mentors uh, mm -hmm. from young to old and old, 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 you know, people in their 80s and the just one. listening to them. And, you know, because I find that there might be um, uh, one of the things early on in my 20s I learned was there is no such thing as a, as a, as a bad question. No, you know, and you could basically, oh, sorry, not a bad question, a stupid because there's no th such thing as a stupid question uh, because it's only the stupid answer. But the <laughs> you can ask as many questions from people that in, in the community that you admire or that you like or that you don't even know and you get to learn about them. So 
how do you uh, mentor people? Um, like, you know, we're talking about being able to do these mentoring. How do you go about the process of actually getting out and saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing to mentor you. How do you process that through? Um, so I just said to the artists, but you know, before our meeting, look, you might just have specific questions you want to ask me about the industry, or you might, you know, you might want to show me your work. Um, and a lot of, most of them, all of them really had work that they were working on. Mm. Um, some of them had, you know, they, they'd been dabbling for quite a while and they had clearly had skill, but they didn't know which way to go as in, you know, should I go, ab should I be doing this abstract work? Should I be doing this figurative work? So I just helped them work through what I felt. And obviously it was just my opinion, what I felt. Um, was their strengths from what I saw. So it's very different. I don't usually do, uh, when I critique people's work I, online, I always say to them, I can't really critique the quality of your work mm. um, because I can't see it in the yes. real. I need to see it in the real. So they all they all understood that. But I could get a, I could get a grasp of what sort of styles they were working in and what I thought uh, looked you know, the best out of what they were producing. So uh, a lot of um, a lot of the artists had more than one, they might have thought they had one body of work on the go, but then as we started talking about it and as I looked at it, I could see that it was actually more like two. Mm. So they, it was about sort of narrowing it down and choosing which body of work they were going to explore further. Yeah, let's um, let's talk about um, the difference between critiquing someone, someone, and criticizing someone. So, I mean, a lot of times people think, oh, when you're critiquing <laughs> someone, it's actually a criticism of their work, and um, and a lot of people take it the wrong way when you're saying, hey, try this, and they think, oh no, they don't like my work, and so on, and mm. it becomes a negative. So, how do you differentiate between a critique and a criticism? Well, first of all, I think it's essential for artists to get critique of their work. Because if you don't get outside professional critique and that person who's doing the critiquing is not your mother, is not your partner, it's not yeah. your uncle. Um, it has to be someone who is not emotionally attached to you uh, to get a, a real comment. So a professional person who's working in the arts industry, yeah. um, which could be anything from you know interior design to architecture to... All, across all genres of of the art world. Mm. Um, the difference is that the person doing the critiquing isn't just slamming you and saying, oh, that's, that's rubbish, your work's awful, forget it. It's a, the critiquing is about pulling out from the person's work what, what is their strengths and what they what they perhaps need to delve more into, um, whether that be um, understanding that, you know, good artwork needs needs to have some depth to it, as yeah. in a story, because you're actually trying to say something with your art. Yeah. That's one of the things I always say to artists, if they're struggling, just ask yourself, what am I trying to say with this piece of work? What is it? Because without that, it just it can easily just become a decorative piece, and that is one of the one of the big differences between fine art and a decorative art is yeah. the depth of uh, research, understanding, and and obviously technique is a huge part to play in it. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's the difference. It's not fine art because it's worth fifty grand. It's fine art because it might be worth fifty grand, but there's a huge amount of you know, time, effort, research, um, training, all of these mm. things in behind that will result in this great body of work or piece of work. And so, I mean, it is something that that most artists are lacking is to have this a person who can do this critique of their work yeah. and help them to progress with their work. That's really what critiquing is about and mentoring mm. is because you want to get better you want more you want to give more into your work so that the viewer can get more out of your work 
And um, it, it, I am really passionate about it because um, part of, you know, one of my missions is to raise the, the standard of art in Northland yeah. um, on a commercial level. And that has to come from the artists as much as from the public viewing it as professional artwork. Because if you don't believe in what you're doing and if you don't treat it as a profession, then how can you expect other people to do the same? It has to come from the artists. Essentially, it has to come from the artists. One of the things, uh, I mean, like anybody who goes into a gallery, they kind of go look at it and they go, uh, oh, I can do that. Oh, that's not that, you know, it's not that much in there. Uh, so let's talk about the training behind it because a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of training and a lot of uh, schooling. And I'm always, uh, you know, always sort of think people people just who dabble in it, there's a difference between people who dabble in the arts and people who actually train to be something in the arts. So how do you, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So there's a lot of self-taught artists and I'm that's completely valid. So, um, you know, an example is uh, a woman that I critiqued last week. She, you know, was very, very much self-taught, um, but she, the, the standard of her work was really high mm. and she just needed some direction into, you know, she had her figurative work and her abstract work and she just wanted to discuss, you know, which way to go. Um, doing an art degree is, is a wonderful thing and I felt very privileged to be able to do that in Northland mm. because that's where I lived and obviously, you know, I wanted to remain up here. Um, and it just teaches you so much about yourself and the process that it takes to be an art, a practicing artist. And I think that because I've been through that process myself, um, I definitely have an empathy for artists in that position because I know how you know soul destroying it can be yeah. um, if you make something and you know you don't like what you've what the result is or hasn't worked out the way that you wanted or it's not received well but that's all part of um you know doing a degree and putting in that that time into developing as an artist so you have to develop whether you do that um in an institution or you've done that through self-learning mm. there's no right or wrong it's just whatever fits the person, I guess, and some people haven't had the opportunity to study, um, but you know they've then put in a, a lot, a lot of study time at home on their own work. So there's no, there's definitely no right or wrong way. I I needed to go to an institution and go to classes and be motivated. Yeah. <laughs> that worked for me. <laughs> so, um, so how do you um like say we were just talking about like self-taught people how do you deal with someone who's actually uh, self-taught and comes to you and goes hey you know uh, i'm not a trained i don't have a diploma in this and i would like to exhibit uh how do you deal with those people i deal with them the same way that i deal with everybody and mm. that is show me the work let's see yeah. what you've done and we'll take it from there mm. um you have to have the work before you can even consider doing you know approaching a gallery you actually have to have that part sorted first and that you know someone might approach me and say oh you know I want to exhibit my work in a gallery that's all very well but they might not get to do that for another couple of years because they actually yeah. need to produce a solid body of work so what I say yeah. to everybody is produce choose what you're going to be working on what your theme mm -hmm. is and produce 20 works yeah. on your theme. Because within those 20 works, maybe half of them won't be as good as the other half. And that's where the tricky bit starts, is editing your work. And it's very difficult for a lot of artists to edit out their work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you know that's where a curator comes in. So when you then you know have this body of work and you present it, just because you've presented 20 pieces of work to, you know, said gallery um, doesn't mean that they're all going to get shown. 
because they might not all be as good as one another. Yep. And that's where, again, bringing it right back to that's where the critiquing comes in. And generally, artists will need some help mm. in the early <laughs> stage of their career to be able to learn that editing process. Mm. Let's, let's talk about how, like, uh, the difference between having your uh, your your close friends saying it's great work to where the gallery owner says it's great work. Do you so, well, so your family don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm. Yeah. And so unless you have, you know, an arts, pra if you, unless you're lucky enough to have an arts practitioner in, within mm. your extended family or close network, um, no one's good. It's it'll be so easy for a mother to say everything that they, the child, you know, or how we yeah. the child is is great. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just that emotional connection, and and that's very important, isn't it, to be uh, able to say, look, this is this is fine, and but this is where it's at when it comes to actually showing your piece and having me actually sell that piece and trying mm. to get the uh, get the community involved in that. Uh, so, have you had many people come in and go, well, this is, everybody's been telling me that my work is great, so I should put it in the gallery, but oh, how, yeah. yeah, how do you deal with that? Um, I generally just say, if the work's not, I just say it's, you're not ready, mm -hmm. your work isn't ready, so, and especially, I've, you know, I have come across that a few times with group shows, Yeah. so I might have someone bringing in a piece of work that actually isn't up to standard, so if I if I hang that piece of work, it demeans the other works that are in the gallery. So I'm yep. not respecting. I wouldn't be respecting the artists who you know whose work is of a high level if mm. I let a piece of work in that is substandard. Yeah. And yes, that has been tricky at times, Aru. It has been very tricky. But I'm yep. like I said before. I've just remained true to that. Um, that, that standard because mm. I have to keep that standard for everybody's sake and yeah. especially the artists, the art, other artists that show their work in my gallery, they know that they're going to be among peers who have a high standard of work as well and that's very important. Mm. And it's very, you're right, it is very important um, but the thing is like a lot of um, people who haven't had that uh, that criticism, that actual proper criticism probably go again, oh, it does this, this. But you're right, it diminish, diminish, uh, diminishes other people's work. And you yourself will be going, yeah. oh, I just, uh, I, I don't know how to sell this piece. And you and awkward. And, and yeah, I face and that as well. That's why I don't hang yeah. them, because I just think, well, it's going against my ethical standards, mm. hanging the work. And it's not just, you know, it's not just because I'm mean or fussy. Or, it's, it's, it's because yeah. I'm trying to maintain this level that exactly. is that highly important and critical to you know the reputation of the gallery mm. and you know to the kudos of the other artists who exhibit with me i want them to be assured that yeah. their work is going to be you know in the best company exactly i mean i, I with, with comics uh and you know with publishing and stuff i face the same thing it's like okay you need to uh your your you know your cover's not right you need to work on that cover and mm. And you spend time with these people and you go, please just bring it up to standard so we can publish it and be able to sell it. Because yeah. you, 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 I mean, I find this why I was asking this question is because I find myself going, I don't know how to actually sell your product. I don't know mm. because it's not to the quality as the other product on the shelf. Yeah. And I can't sell your product next to it because nobody's going to look at it and nobody's mm. going to feel the same way and value it the same way. And yeah. that's the reason I was asking. I know it's a hard question, but that's why I was asking. It is asking. a hard question, but, you know, it's a really valid one. And I, I think unless an artist is prepared to hear critique, mm. um, they're not going to progress with their work. They're just yes. going to be stuck like a draft horse with those blinkers on. You yep. have to know, you have to be engaged with your art community. You have to mm. know what's going on on a bigger scale, you know, like, for instance, the Auckland Art Fair is, is online at the moment. It mm -hmm. finishes tomorrow. So if anyone's listening and they haven't looked at the Auckland Art Fair, I really encourage you to do that. Um, so there's international uh, 
galleries that have exhibited as well. Um, so, you know, you need to open up. You need to open up your vision to make your work the best that it can possibly be. Mm. Uh, and that doesn't mean scrolling Instagram until you feel like what's the point in producing any artwork because everything mm. is so darn good. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. I mean, I um, I had the same thing. Like, I mean, uh, it's like you look at somebody else's work and uh, and you go, oh, man, you know, I was thinking about doing that, or but they did it so well, I uh, might as well not do that. Mm. I mean, I've walked into galleries doing that. Like, I mean, um, when I was back in um, art school um, here, like yourself, you know, uh, back in uh, 96, 97, 98, and I was working on these pieces that now are in galleries that looked exactly the same as my pieces. And I'm thinking, <laughs> if I'd only stuck with it. Yeah. You know, I went away to film school and then came, you know, did everything else. And then I'm going, that's a piece of ceramic art that looks exactly like my piece of work. And I'm like, you know, it's it's challenging when you have, uh, art, um, yeah, it's challenging when you have other people that are, do similar work. How do you deal with that? To you, you know, to another like, artist. Um. Well, I always say the proof is in the is in the the real product. So when I see anything, anything could look good on Instagram. Let's face it, anything. Um, so the proof is when I see the actual work in the real, what the quality is like, and you know that's what differentiates. And I mean, one of my other favourite sayings that I share with um, a lot of people when I get the chance, is inspiration comes while you work, not while you wait. Exactly. So as you're aimlessly scrolling through Instagram, making yourself feel not so great, um, instead of doing that, you know, go to your art practice and uh, whether drawing, painting, sculpting, whatever, photography, you know, and actually put, put that time into creating something for you. And also another another one I like, um, which was shared with me by one of my tutors at North Tech, Faith McManus, who's a printmaking and painting tutor. Um, when I was in a bit of a funk in my third year, um, and I sort of didn't, I was really stuck with what, which way I was going with my work. She just said to me, Megan, just make work that you love. And I went, oh, okay. And I did, and I was off. And I, you know, made this really great body of work. So... Yeah, you've just you've got to you know tune into yourself more than uh, all of the other social media. But you know, saying that you still it's still good to to keep abreast of of what's going on in the world. Yeah, and and inspiration is kind of an interesting thing. I mean, I get I get like like you're saying, get into a funk, and I just look at everything around me, and look at other people's work, and go, you know. I should be working. And that's kind of the little things that, you know, inspiration is amazing. Um, how do you try to inspire your, uh, you know, your artists that, you know, to do more work or to um, to get in involved in maybe stretching out a bit more of what they're actually doing already? But you, when you as, an, uh, as a curator can see, they can do a bit more. How do you try to inspire people? Um, well, I just, I just, I guess one of the things is, you know, making that quantity of work. You have to make a lot of work. There's another saying, and I can't remember who who said it. Um, you have to you have to make a lot of shit work before you can make some good work. So not everything. One of one of the my bugbears is that you know just because you're a, a particular genre of artist, you you might have a specific reputation. You might be quite high up there. Just because you are doesn't mean that every piece of work you make is going to be good. It's just yeah. not. It's just not. So um, that that is something that you can push through with making lots and lots of work. And that is, you know, when we were at art school, we were really encouraged to just make a lot of work yeah. um, because, again, it builds into that the inspiration comes while you're working, mm. not while you're just kind of thinking about it. Um, and you just have to keep making and making. And so I'll just encourage people, you know, to dig a bit deeper. Yeah. You know, keeping visual diaries. Um, another, another, um, another common 
thing that happens to artists, they, they say, oh, I'm working on this body of work, but then all these ideas come in and then I get carried away off onto another little tangent. So one of my my advice for that is you can't ignore the, the good ideas that are coming. You have to write them yeah. down. So it's like someone knocking on your door. You've got to answer the door. You can't just yeah. go, oh, not now. I, I, I'm trying to focus and get all annoyed about it. You have to, you know, take take the jewel that's being presented, which is this yeah. new idea. You know, give it give it 20 minutes or an hour and and write some notes about it, do some drawings, but don't totally give in to it. Just make a note of it, acknowledge it. And I mean, this is just kind of, you know, you can use this technique for so many things in life. Just mm -hmm. acknowledge it, be grateful for it, and keep a note of it because that's that's a, a whole new body of work that you'll be able to go off on or not um, yep. when you finish this particular one that you're working on. So, yeah, you can't ignore those special things that come while you're making because inspiration comes while you work. <laughs> it's, that's true. Uh, the other thing is a no, lot of people get thing. hung up about making mistakes. Like, yeah. um, you know, um, if I found like sometimes if I do some, you know, make a lot uh, wrong line on my art, I just expect, oh, whatever I'm doing, if I don't follow through on that wrong, I'll, I won't end up with something good. I, I find that like if I... I can always go back because of the mediums that sometimes are used, but a lot of times people go, well, I, I'm going to, I got to fix that. I got to fix it before I even explore that. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, well, just exploring. Yeah. Stuff. So I, when my children were little, they're teenagers now. So when they were little and the, and they would be not really not preschoolers because preschoolers mm -hmm. will paint and draw, you know, with it, with abandonment and, and, you know, don't, are not critical of their work but when they get into that sort of school age where they're like oh I've made a mistake like you just said I always used to say to them there's no such thing as a mistake it's just going to turn it into something that you you didn't realize yeah. so that worked really well my daughter loved that um and you know that's something that we can all we can all take a bit of Bit of advice from I suppose not advice but you know what I'm trying to say um, encouragement um, that it doesn't necessarily need to be a mistake so I was actually a florist for uh, 15 years and um, I used this technique when I, I used to teach floristry so if I was making a bouquet a wedding bouquet for instance and I went oh you know it's usually at like midnight or something that you're making these the night before the wedding. Um, oh, this isn't working. I don't like the look of it. You put it down and walk mm. away. Have a drink or, you know, something to eat. Go outside, get some fresh air, and then come back and look at it. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I'd come back and look at it and go, oh, it's actually really good. I was just, I just needed a break. So I, that's another piece of advice for, for artists. If you're making something and you think it's rubbish, mm. um, just walk away, have a break from it, and, and come back to it because it might be really, really good. <laughs> and that's true in a lot of things because that break allows you to, your brain to, to just be calmed down. I think the yeah. stress sometimes overwhelms people, especially if you're an artist, if you, if you just – you know, you get to that tipping point of going, oh, just not working, just not working. And if you don't just walk away from it, you just keep, I think if you continue working on the piece, it has two ways of going. It either becomes good or it becomes worse. Mm. But Or if you just walk away, it'll become great. And I think that's the difference between the stress levels when it comes to trying to create. Uh, I want to talk about, um, I talk to a lot of people about this, about artists and their mental uh, and emotional ties to their work. And, mm -hmm. Um, because I know a lot of artists, because their work is their work, and a lot of a lot of people have their work as their work, and it becomes part of them. Um, how do you deal with people who are so and so connected to their work, and they don't want to let it go, or don't want to oh, sell you it? You mean they don't want to sell it? Yeah. Well, because I've been through that process myself. Yeah. Um, I re I do actually really understand it because some of the things that I made in my first year of studying, I was like, someone wanted to buy them and I was, oh, I don't want to sell it because it was the first thing I made and, um, 
uh, and, and actually it was my husband at the time who said to me, Megan, just sell it because I can guarantee you're going to make much better work, you know, in the, in the coming years. Um, of course, there's always little gems that, that you, you know, you want to keep. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, uh, there's something you're going to need to release the work at some point. So mm. yeah, it's just a process. There's no, there's no recipe for that, to be honest. You're just going to have to be ready to do it. And I guess just that trusting and that belief that you are going to make something else equally, if not better, mm. the next time round. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for this, um, you know, this discussion with you. I mean, I just, I, I really appreciate it when I talk to people like yourself and um, especially in the community that we, you know, there's so much going on. And despite, you know, what's been happening around us that we can actually, uh, you know, like, come into your gallery, come into other people's workplaces and actually be inspired and uh, enjoy people's work and actually go away feeling a bit better about ourselves because we have so many amazing people doing so many amazing hard work to help our community at this time. Uh, yeah. And finishing, and what would you engaged, like to say? You know, and being engaged with the arts community, mm. I think that's really, it's important for, for artists to see what other artists are making mm. and get out of their studios. Yeah, I'm not just saying that to come into my gallery. I just think, generally speaking, it's a it's a good thing to do. It, it, yeah, sure, you can see loads of things online, but it's, mm. there's nothing like going and seeing art in person mm. and engaging. Well, it's with the same, it's the same thing as like digital work, isn't it? It's just like seeing everything in, on social media. It's only digital. You cannot, you can't really experience it until you see it in 3D. Uh, see it as a uh, actual physical work and i'm uh, same thing when it comes to digital comics and comics in real i mean i still want to have these things in physical form even though i might have it on digital form yeah yeah um, that tactile part and and art is like that and I, I just love the fact that uh it's a i mean i like to create art that you can touch and mm. that's me but while i actually still do digital work yeah um so in finishing what would you like to um say to the community at large in the artists and mentoring yeah, um, what, one of the one of my other little sayings that actually one of my great grandfather used to say this. My mother passed this down to me actually. She, he used to say, "If you don't ask, you don't get." So this comes back to what you were talking about earlier about asking questions and being being brave and asking questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to ask. And what's the worst case scenario? Someone's going to say no, mm -hmm. but probably more than more than often they're going to say yes. <laughs> So being Excellent. brave, being brave, and um, you know, reaching out to taking that next step about you know getting getting your work critiqued and treating art, your artwork as a profession, not just a hobby. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you have to be fully employed doing your artwork. It's a, it's an attitude towards what you're doing, mm -hmm. and that you know art is a valid profession. That's another thing I'm extremely passionate about. So it's a valid profession mm. and, you know, let's treat it as such. Everybody from artists through to the public. Awesome. We've got a lot of awesome artists up here. Exactly. So, yeah. We're a big, you, we're a big jewellery box full of mm. gems. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, Megan. I just really appreciate uh, you taking your time out, and um, especially in the weekend. Uh, you know, and um, oh, all the best. Feels like lockdown to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, you've got a dawn on at the moment, uh, which is all um, about twenty different artists uh, with uh, with jewelry. Uh, what sort of yeah. other stuff is there? Well, there's there's so there's you know necklaces, there's headpieces, earrings, bracelets. Um, brooches, there's quite a lot of brooches, um, you know, things made from, I've got a beautiful range of black pearls, um, there's silver, gold, fibre, mm. knitted, knitted items made out of, you know, sterling silver wire, shells, there's so many different um, materials that the artists have used, it's a really great collection. Awesome. So we 
we will be having um, a new show opening up in June. So hopefully when that level comes down and, you know, we can have a few more people congregating, um, we will be having an opening. It might be a little different but um, to the past, but it will still happen. Yes. Awesome. Thank All you right. so much for having me. Very grateful. And it's great. You're doing a great job too, Aru. And, you know, you're keeping people connected. And that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, thank you so much. And from wherever you are sitting and wherever in the world you are, keep safe and, hey, keep well. Thank you so much. Kakite Ano. Thank you, Megan. I'll catch you soon. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>